Uh, welcome to this last half day of uh, the MediDevConf in Regensburg. Uh, Philippe Mathias Hahn will be talking to us about how Univention is building packages on top of Debian. Thank you for the kind introduction. Uh, yes, my name is Philipp Hahn. Uh, I'm working for Univention GmbH, which is a company located in the north of Germany. And uh, I hired there in 2009, um, now being a full-time open source software engineer there. Previously, uh, I've uh, applied to be a Debian developer in 2002, so I made this my main work now. Actually, I started in 1996 with Linux, and yes, now that's my main job. So, who is this Univention GmbH? We are, uh, uh, we, Univention GmbH was founded 2002 in Bremen, nearly the same time I applied to, to be a Debian developer, and we are a producer of open source software. Uh, everything we do is 100% uh, open source, and our vision is to uh, provide digital sovereignty and to help you keep your uh, IT infrastructure independent from the major providers like cloud providers or uh, using software of other commercial companies. Uh, our main focus is uh, identity and access management, so it's uh, we target uh, the enterprise market where you have want a central database where you enroll all your employees or another context is school providers uh, where you have all your students uh, in a country or of a city enrolled in your central database so you can assign them to classes and to connect to other external providers for example the German um, um, menu uh, Companies who provide teaching materials want to connect to the schools so the students can uh, access uh, online training courses as, and such. The other thing we are working on is, you might have heard of it, the European project Gaia-X to uh, help uh, Germany, uh, Europe to be independent from the great cloud scalers like uh, Amazon or uh, Google or Microsoft, where the goal is to set up a European-based cloud infrastructure, which allows you to select uh, them and to not to be dependent on uh, the US-based companies. Um, Actually, we, uh, we started in Bremen. Nowadays, we have offices also in Berlin, Leipzig, and the USA. Uh, but also, many of my colleagues work from home. Nowadays, even before Corona forced us to be home only. And we're about 70 people by now. The, uh, when I started in 2009, we were about uh, 30 people, so the company is growing. Our main product is Univention Corporate Server, and the product based on it is, is called UCS at School, which targets um, school providers uh, in cities and uh, countries. So. I need to be a, bit, a little bit more detailed about our main product, which is Univention Corporate Server. Actually, it's based on Debian GNU Linux. Um, we just released version 5.0 uh, mid of this year, and at that time, Debian 10 Buster was still current. Um, what we what, we planned to release it last year, but we had a lot to do a lot of work to rebase our uh, work uh, from Python 2 to Python 3, uh, which um, took us much longer than expected. So we are taking the packages from Debian. Uh, we need about to patch 60 packages uh, supplied by Debian, mainly to customize them, to uh, brand them with our corporate identity scheme or add uh, software on patches on top of them to integra better integrate them with our LDAP-based management system. 
Um, we have some patch packages where uh, Debian is too old. Um, this is mainly OpenLDAP related or Zamba 4 related. We were one of the first companies shipping Zamba 4 to enterprise customers um, so they can or could replace their micro -base, Microsoft based infrastructure with open source software. Um, on top of that come 125 custom packages for our graphical user interface, for integration packages, to integrate, for example, uh, backup solutions with our graphical man uh, management interface and more. And this is mainly about those 125 packages which we need to build uh, on top of Debian. So, uh, even looking back, uh, before UCS 4.2, which was about five years ago, we had the policy that we only would import uh, the source packages from Debian and rebuild them all. Um, we didn't um, differentiate if we needed to patch them or not. We only imported the source packages, rebuilt all, and shipped them in our own repositories. Um, this was a major waste of time looking back and uh, it helped Debian in some cases where we uh, identified problems where packages actually failed to build from source um, uh, and provided this back. But in 2016 we decided, okay, let's change it. Um, so nowadays it's so that we import, still import the source packages, but all the binary packages provide them on our own FTP site and only those 60 packages where we actually need to change the default configuration, um, we patch them and um, uh, rebuild them and provide them on our main site. So this is the first step we did to reduce the time we need to um, build a new distribution. So this is from the time before I started. So when I started, the uh, status quo was the Univention is using PBuilder environment and building their own uh, software using apt FTP archive to build the index files and so on and so on. Um, we are still using this, but this has m many drawbacks for us. One of them is um, we are using NFS and uh, NFS is a little bit of clunky. Uh, especially when it comes to efficiently building package files or source files. Uh, the main killer for NFS is if you don't look in the details, um, you get in the situation where you have 60,000 source packages, where you have, uh, uh, sorry, 16,000 source packages, where you have 60,000 um, binary package and apt FTP archiv will do a start call on them each time. So to build the package file, you suddenly need two to five hours because uh, NFS is deadly slow. Uh, so we have invested a lot of time to get this fast. apt FTP, apt FTP archive still has an interesting bug. It uses a um, you can say it to not start things, but uh, apt FTP archiv still uses a library which does it behind the back and it's so it's still slow in several cases. And the main drawback for us is um, we want to, to use feature branches which is currently not supported um, by this infrastructure, this legacy infrastructure. So we started to improve this and if you look, first we had tarballs when the company was started in 2002. There were just directories where the current source code was extracted to and everyone was shipping tar archives to colleges. Then we introduced CVS, then Subversion, and nowadays we're using Git. The main problem with Git in our environment is we have a mono repository, which means we have one great uh, 
uh, Git repository where all those 125 packages are located in. And if you do branching with Git, um, you push a new branch and uh, the traditional way is, in this case, uh, the software behind us is GitLab detects, okay, everything has changed. And the first time you push a new Git branch, uh, Git decides to, okay, let's rebuild all those 125 packages. And a colleague of mine then decided, okay, uh, we need some to optimize this. Let's find out which branch is this feature branch based off. Let's calculate the delta, uh, extract the packages which have changed and only uh, build those. And we need to store them back at that time. Rep Repo was the software chosen, um, which worked quite well, but still for us, um, it's um, kind of clunky. So it's yet another implementation. It's still based on pbuilder using uh, compressed tar files. Um, it's located on a single VM. So uh, if one feature branch is built, it is uh, blocked and no other feature branch can be uh, built uh, and is put in a queue for later on. Um, there are also some problems with uh, automatically changing Debian changelog uh, entries. We need this to distinguish the packages from different branches. So the next thing we build is, okay, uh, everyone is using containers, we too. So uh, the idea was to, okay, we will build a base image with uh, a minimal UCS distribution inside it. We use Debootstrap, build a Docker container, and everything then reuses this container. We have built a software which will take this mono repository and say, okay, we have 125 packages. In which order do I need to build them? Uh, every, anybody who has ever tried to bootstrap a new Debian um, rep uh, and a new Debian release for a new architecture will find this interesting. There are all kind of different things you have to think about, like there are circular dependencies, you have to uh, read the documentation and profiles, and um, luckily we don't have to um, look in any details of this, but the, the current solution then calculates um, a graph and says first you need to build these five packages. If you're done with this, you can uh, calculate uh, or build the next 10 packages and so on until in the end you have rebuilt all 125 packages. There are little tricks. Uh, if you directly build from Git, you have, for example, the problem that Git doesn't store the timestamps of your files, uh, which leads to that your package currently, uh, suddenly will not be reproducible uh, because you have, any time you check out your Git repository, it uses the current timestamp. The current timestamps later on is part of the build Debian binary package and um, you will then see, okay, um, if, a, if I build the same tree twice, I will get different results. Uh, so normally in Debian you don't have the problem while you, because you always have a tar file in between which stores um, the timestamps and uh, which makes then your build reproducible. If you skip that intermediate step of using uh, directly Git, be sure to uh, put your timestamps, uh, make them stable. So um, we used a different software aptly, which has a nice remote API, but also has its drawbacks. It has problems if you rebuild the same package and you are reusing the uh, version triple, which we already have used. And this is still a bug in Aptly. There is a force option, but it doesn't work. So um, nowadays, uh, Git has a new feature where you, uh, the GitLab has a new feature where, you, where it provides a so-called Debian package repository. 
so you no, no longer need this aptly or reprepro software, but and, and theoretically can store your packages directly with GitLab. I tried to use it the last week, uh, but it's still hidden behind a feature reflect because it doesn't work. So currently you have to stay with these um, old things. And um, this is the thing I'm currently working on. The current approach uh, is still slow because when you put a new feature branch, we still uh, have to rebuild all those 125 packages. And the idea is, okay, now our package are reproducible and I want to use this feature. For example, in this graph, if I change package B here, the first on the left the thing, um, it should trigger a downstream build. So I want to make sure I have package C, which depends on package B. I want to still rebuild B because changes I did to B might break the downstream build. But if building package C then still provides the same reproducible binaries at last time did with the old package B, I, I can skip, um, sorry, it's a little bit garbled, uh, package D, I can break the downstream build there um, and save time by this. And um, But if I have other downstream packages like, for example, here F, which has a direct dependency on B, I still want to break them, uh, to build them. And this is currently what I'm working on. I um, have um, a half working version of this, but not yet finished. So this is currently what I'm working on. So basically, that's it, what uh, I'm working on, uh, the uh, things that um, I've learned the hard way. And um, if you're looking for a job, we are hiring. Uh, so if you either want uh, to work on Python or to work on Debian packages or even want to contribute back, you can use part of your time to work on Debian-related things, uh, contact me or one of my colleagues here is the last slide. So you don't have to be located in Bremen, you can work from home office and so I'm at the end. Are there any questions? Yeah, we do have a couple of minutes for questions. So no. Yeah, hi, thanks for the talk. Um, I'm wondering the step builder thing you mentioned like three slides before, is that a general project? Is that an un internal intervention thing? Is that public? Th this thing called debt builder here, yeah. uh, currently internal, but if you're interested, I can send you the source code. It, it sounds interesting at least. I mean, would okay. be, I don't know. Right. I can, uh, when I put the slides online, I can also sh uh, share the code for that. More questions? Doesn't seem so. So, thank you and have a good time here. <laughs>